What you're seeing on screen right now is the difference that sunscreen makes when it comes to blocking UV rays. You can see it literally changing live as she's applying the sunscreen. This view really lets you see how important wearing sunblock is. In honor of Banish, the skincare company that I'm sponsored by, releasing their brand new sunscreen product called the Defender, which is a 50 SPF product. I wanna talk about some things when it comes to sunscreen, because we all know we're supposed to use it, we all know what it is, but there's a lot of stuff that's left on the table that I constantly have wondered, like how much are we supposed to actually apply? It says generous, what does that actually mean? I wanna go over some sunscreen myths. I also wanna talk about some sunscreen ingredients that you should absolutely avoid, because they're actually hormone disruptors, which is really bad. And there's a couple of things that are really interesting that I dove into with my research. So without further ado, let's learn about some sunscreen. Okay, so first off, what exactly does sunscreen do? And I think all of us have like a generalized idea, but why are we using it exactly? First off, it is anti-aging. There's actually quite a few uh, different photos of people, like for example, uh, a set of twins where one used sunblock their entire life, the other didn't. Uh, there's also another photo where a guy is a driver, so he's always getting hit in the sun on one side of his face, not the other. And in these photos, we can see exactly how much not using sunscreen will age your skin by literally a decade or two decades by the time you're 50 or 60, so that's massively important. Secondly, wearing sunscreen over your normal skincare routine will actually keep the active ingredients in your normal skincare products active because the sun can quickly oxidize those ingredients and cause them basically to be useless. And third, a lot of us know that not using sunscreen puts you at a much higher risk for uh, skin cancers. This is actually a study I found that showed there are excellent studies that sunscreen protects against all three of the most common skin cancers, squamous cell carcinoma, basal cell carcinoma, and melanoma. Okay, so that is why we absolutely need to use it. Every single day, even if you're not going outside, the UV rays will come through the window and hit you in the face and in your body and your skin, so you should be using at least some sunscreen, right? Now, the next gigantic question is, do we really need to reapply? Because there are a lot of conflicting opinions about this. I actually found a study that explains exactly this. Recent experimental studies have shown that sunscreen remains on the skin at the desired SPF for as long as eight hours after a single application. It then goes on to say, however, reapplication is suggested when the likelihood of sunscreen having been removed is high, such as sweating, water immersion, friction from clothing, and exfoliation from sand. This is actually really important information because all day UV rays are hitting your skin, but especially during high noon from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., that is when the sun's UV rays are the brightest and most damaging, and that is when you want to have your sun protection the most. So this is important because even if you put on sunscreen multiple hours, maybe at like 9 a.m., it should still be protecting you by 11, 12, 1, 2. That's important information to know. Okay, the next big question that I personally had is how much should you apply, right? They always say a generous amount, but what does that actually mean? I was able to find some guidelines from the Canadian Dermatology Institute, and they actually had an image illustrating how much sunscreen should be used. And in the image, it shows a bunch of spoons next to areas of the body. So it said one on the face and neck, two for the torso, one for each arm, and two for the legs. Now, I don't know if these are tablespoons or teaspoons, and in the study, it doesn't actually explain. It just says see illustration. I would assume that this is tablespoons because two teaspoons for a leg feels pretty small, but it could be teaspoons. I need further studies. I need for you Canadian doctors to explain what a damn spoon is, okay? Next up, are certain sunscreens or sunscreen ingredients bad for you? So I've actually heard that there are some chemicals that are really bad, not only for the environment, but then I've also heard that some chemicals are actually really bad and are hormone disruptors for our own bodies. So for those reasons, neither of them should be used ever, but there are still products that use these ingredients. Now, the main one that you do have to look out for is oxybenzone. I actually found a study on this and it said, among human research participants, a prospective study noted reduced fecundity, which is fertility, when men were exposed to benzophenone 2 and 4-hydroxybenzophenone. So right there, you should absolutely avoid any sunscreen products that have oxybenzone or those ingredients in it. You should definitely lean towards products that have natural sunscreen protectant ingredients in them that don't 
disrupt your hormones, things like titanium dioxide, uh, zinc oxide, things like that. Now, my other big question I wanted to know is what UV protection is the right amount? A lot of people use 20 and 15 SPF. I feel like that's a little low. I've heard 30 to 50. I've seen some as high as 70. So what's the right one? I want to know, right? So there's quite a few studies about this, but there's actually a really cool video clip from uh, Physics Girl, and she actually shows using a UV camera the difference between the protection of a bunch of ranges of SPF. And you can see on her arm, basically everything 50 and above blocks, it looks all about the same, right? It's about the same darkness. So it's all blocking UV ray about the same amount. When you go down to 30, and especially as you go down lower than that, you can see that it is not protecting nearly as well against UV rays. Like I said, there's also quite a bit of research and studies about this. The American Dermatology Association suggests a 50 SPF or higher in terms of protecting you from anti-aging as well as, you know, skin cancers from UV rays. And that's kind of where I found the sweet spot is because with 50 SPF, that's where you're getting the most UV ray protection, but you're also not going high enough where you have a white cast left over on your face where you can actually see the sunscreen. That is not something that looks fantastic. So like I said, Vanish just came out with their brand new sunscreen. It's called the Defender and it is 50 SPF. They've been working on this actually for a really long time. I've been in contact with the CEO of Vanish, who is a good friend of mine, Daisy, and she has been working on this for multiple years. Only just over the last year, she pulled me into this and had me testing them out and putting them on my face and telling her, you know, my feedback so that we could tweak it and things like that. And I personally now feel like this is absolutely the best formulation she could have possibly come up with. So for the active ingredients, the ingredients that are actually repelling that UV rays from getting into your skin is titanium dioxide 7%, zinc oxide 7%, and mica 3%. These are all those natural ones that do not disrupt your hormones. Now, Banish being a completely natural company that focuses their skincare products on mild to moderate acne, but also improving acne scarring, they did put quite a bit of thought into the other ingredients that go into it as well. A few of those things are like cucumber fruit extract, which is really good for hydrating and softening the skin. It's also anti-inflammatory, so that's really good for acne prone skin. Things like palmitoyl peptides, which are really good for the synthesis of collagen, which is what keeps your skin looking young and fresh. Also avocado seed oil, which is really good for moisturizing. It also helps increase collagen and metabolism. And also you've probably heard of this before. It has jojoba seed oil, which is really great for moisturizing dry skin, but it is also antibacterial. It's great for eczema, acne, psoriasis. So they really made this product to uh, work for people who have acne prone skin or skin that has irritation. So like I said, I've been using this now for quite a long time. This final version I've been using for about a month now before it got launched. And the last question that I wanted to know is how am I supposed to use this sunblock with my other skincare products? So after looking into this, I actually found that there's a really, really beneficial thing that sunblock can do. So what you're supposed to do is use whatever normal moisturizer that you use. So do your normal skincare routine in the morning, whether that's a cleanser or a toner or whatever, and then your moisturizer, which for me, I use a vitamin C moisturizer because vitamin C is really good for collagen and elastin regrowth. It's anti-aging. It's also protective against acne. So I put that on usually, but then what? Are we supposed to put the sunblock on top? Are we supposed to mix them together? What is it? Well, actually, if you want to get absolutely scientific and technical and get the best use of your products, so you don't have to do this, but you would apply the moisturizer first, let it absorb for about five to 10 minutes, then come back and put the sunblock on top. The reason why you don't want to mix them together is because then it just becomes one conglomerate product. But when you layer it and let the vitamin C or the moisturizer absorb first, then you put that sunblock on top. The sunblock is going to work basically as like a protectant of the ingredients that are in the moisturizer. So if you're not using a sunscreen and you have vitamin C on your face, the vitamin C will likely get hit by the sun, get oxidized, and it will become a lot less useful, right? So like the moisturizer will still keep your skin moist and that's really, really great. But if you have any active ingredients in there that you want to work, you wanna protect those from sun damage as well, which is what having the sunblock on top will do. So the answer is layering. So there you have it, you sexy people. I wanted to dive deep into sunscreen. This is actually a video idea that's been in my to-do list for a long time and it just happens to be perfect timing because Banish is coming out with their new sunscreen that's out right now. So I wanted to make this video. I will make more more videos about sunscreen if you guys have further questions, but 100% absolutely check out the new Banish product called the Defender. It's 50 SPF. It's absolutely fire. I use it every single day. And like I said, I've been using it for over a month now, and I really, really like this. So if you want to get a discount, you can use Brian5, get you $5 off of your order. The link is always in the description below, banishbrian.com. They also have great products for mild to moderate acne. 
acne as well as acne scarring. I've used them for over two years now. They are literally fire. So if you like my skin, then check them out. And that brings us to the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. Subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And I'll see you beautiful people in the very next video. Peace.